In this video, we're going to be looking at special tests used in the diagnosis of sacroiliac or SI joint dysfunction. And before we get into those special tests, I want to clear up some confusion regarding this test item cluster. So there's actually multiple test item clusters that have been made regarding the SI joint. The one we're covering here is the most common one. This is also known as the cluster of Laslett, named for Laslett et al., that actually evaluated these special tests in this cluster. Originally, the cluster of Laslett had five special tests which are listed here in no particular order. Distraction test, compression test, thigh thrust test, we're going to combine these two, Gainsland's test, and the sacral thrust test. And there's five of them, so three out of five of them needed to be positive in order to rule in an SI joint dysfunction. But later on, Laslett et al., the same group, reevaluated this cluster and determined that Gainsland's test was unnecessary. It didn't add any significant clinical value beyond the other four tests, and so they basically threw it out. And by throwing out Gainsland's tests, uh, we're left with the other four, which are in the current cluster of Laslett, and only two out of four of these special tests need to be positive in order to rule in SI joint dysfunction. Gainsland's test and other SI joint test item clusters we'll be covering in later videos. For now, we're going to stick with these four special tests. The first special test we're going to look at is the thigh thrust test. This test is performed in supine, as you see right here, and the PT, me, is going to stand on the patient's asymptomatic side. So in this example, her left side is asymptomatic, and her right side is painful or symptomatic. Probable SI joint dysfunction on the right side. Okay, Let's take a look at this test. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to reach across and bring her symptomatic leg into hip flexion with the knee bent. I'm also going to pull that thigh into slight adduction. Okay? Then I'm going to rotate her over so that I can get my hand underneath her sacrum as shown right here. When you put your hand under the patient's sacrum, your fingers need to point toward the patient's head, as you see right here. Once your hand is positioned under the patient's sacrum, you're going to roll them back over and keep their thigh in slight adduction, as you see right there. And once you have this position, you're going to apply a series of three to six high velocity thrusts directly downward on the thigh. So in this direction from my hand, basically down to the treatment table. And with each downward thrust, the force applied should gradually increase. So let's take a look at that right here. One, two, three, four, five, and six. And essentially what you're doing is you're creating a shear force on the right SI joint in this position. Now with each of these special tests, there's two ways to do them. I'm showing you the first way, which is to apply a series of three to six thrusts or presses or pushes, whatever it happens to be, with gradually increasing force with each repetition. The other way that you can do them is do a static hold for about 30 seconds. So if you're doing the static hold on the thigh thrust test, you would simply press the femur down and hold it for about 30 seconds. I'm going to show you the first way, but either way is appropriate. And a positive thigh thrust test is familiar pain provocation, specifically in the buttock. Let's take one more look at this. So bring the symptomatic hip into flexion with the knee bent. Place your hand directly under the patient's sacrum with your fingers pointing toward their head. Roll them back on your hand. Slight adduction and thrust the thigh down. Three to six high velocity thrusts with increasing force after each repetition. The second special test is the SI distraction test, which is performed in supine, as you see right here. You're going to start by getting carpal contact on each ASIS. There's one ASIS, and there's the other one. You'll know you're in the correct position here when your forearms cross one another. They have to cross, and the fingers of one hand point out this way, and the fingers of the other hand point out the opposite direction. And you're going to apply a series of distraction forces dorsally and laterally to distract each ilium, where each ASIS is attached, away from the sacrum. And you're going to do so by applying a series of three to six moderate velocity thrusts on each ASIS. And which, with each thrust, the force applied should gradually increase. Let's take a look at that right here. So there's one, two, three, 
four, five, and six. And a positive distraction test is going to be familiar pain provocation. Let's take one more look at this. Carpal contact on each ASIS, forearms cross, and then three to six moderate velocity thrusts with increasing force on each thrust. Again, a positive test is familiar pain provocation. The third special test is the sacral thrust test, which is performed in prone. And you're going to begin by having carpal contact on the sacrum at approximately the S2 level. So let's take a look at that. What you'll see here is I'm actually using the same grip that I would normally do if I was doing spinal mobilizations or spring testing on the spine, something like that. Although you can just use a flat hand contact on the sacrum. It doesn't really matter. And from here, you're going to apply a series of three to six high velocity thrusts directly downward onto the sacrum. And again, with each downward thrust, the force applied should gradually increase. So let's take a look at that. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. And that's the sacral thrust test. And a positive test is going to be familiar pain provocation. Let's take one more look at this. This is performed in prone, S2, manual contact, three to six, high velocity thrusts downward. And again, a positive sacral thrust test is familiar pain provocation. The fourth and final special test of the cluster of Laslett is the compression test. And this is performed with the patient in side lying on their symptomatic side. So in this example, she's laying on her right side, so the right side is the symptomatic side. The PT is going to stand behind the patient, as you see here, and use carpal contact on the anterior rim of the ilium. Instead of using the grip that I would use in spring testing on the spine or mobilizations on the spine, I'm just going to use a flat hand contact on the anterior rim of the ilium, as you see right there. And then I'm going to apply a series of three to six moderate velocity thrusts directly downward. And again, what I'm doing is I'm essentially pushing one ilium into the sacrum, which is then being pushed into the other ilium. So really both of the SI joints are being compressed, but especially on this right side. And again, with each downward thrust, the force applied should gradually increase. And a positive compression test is going to be familiar pain provocation. Let's take one more look at the compression test. Patient is in side lying on their symptomatic side. So her right side here is symptomatic manual contact on the anterior rim of the ilium, and I'm going to apply a series of three to six downward thrusts at moderate velocity with gradually increasing force. And a positive test is going to be familiar pain provocation. Now remember, in this updated cluster of Laslett, Gainsland's test has been eliminated, so there's no longer that fifth test, there's only four. And you can certainly follow a flow chart like this. This really just gives a recommended order of tests, starting with thigh thrust, distraction, sacral thrust, and compression. And it looks pretty complicated, but essentially it just says that only two of the four special tests need to be positive to rule in an SI joint dysfunction, and it doesn't matter which two. It just has to be two of the four. And remember, if two of the four tests are positive, they have a pooled sensitivity of 88% and a pooled specificity of 78%. So if two of the four are positive, there's a 78% chance that the person does have SI joint dysfunction. And if none of the tests are positive, they're all negative, there's an 88% chance that the person does not have SI joint dysfunction. So you can never truly rule it out, but it makes it very unlikely. And in the end, true SI joint dysfunctions are very rare. Normally, the pain generator is the hip joint, the lumbar spine, or some kind of nerve that traverses the area. SI joint dysfunction is fairly uncommon. In the next few videos, we're going to be going over Gainsland's test and some other clusters that are not as common to use, but you should be aware of them. Make sure to join us then. Thank you for all your support. Be sure to check out my Instagram for cool science and not science stuff.